Hi, wonderfuls, and welcome to today's show. Today, we are discussing setting real expectations with affiliate marketing. You're back with your host, Tasha from Kif Media Hub and Stephen from SPW Copywriting. Hi, everyone. And it's nice to see you. <laughs> we are here today to give you a little bit of packs as we have an upcoming um, conference course that's happening and it's going to be so amazing um, on how to supplement your business with affiliate marketing. But today's show, we're going to do on setting real expectations with affiliate marketing. So this is one of the most important uh, factors with affiliate marketing because a lot of people's mindset is not at this expectation level where you are wanting to do affiliate marketing you're thinking tomorrow i'm going to be making in the coins ditch my business all about affiliate marketing i'm just going to be a millionaire and everything's good in the hood and it just it doesn't work like that i'm afraid there's there's a lot of strategy a lot of expectations that you have to meet in order for you to really be successful in it and again all of these that we've had, the mindset change, the, the, the five habits, they all interlink with each other. And one of the mindset shifts for me is having a real expectation, really with everything in life, but mostly this. So um, the type of areas we really need to focus on is really where is your business now, okay? Um, in a way, how many followers do you have? What type of relationships do you have? Are they in a solidified position for you to grow with affiliate marketing? And also the expectation is directly relatable to where you're at in each one of those positions. Because if for instance, my business just started, okay, I want to take on affiliate marketing, you have to build up a following first, okay? No one's going to build that trust. No one's going to want to buy from you if you're just starting out and you really haven't got much credibility online to show for anything that people need to trust you with. So I would say from a small business owner's point of view is get your value, your trust across first and get your foundation of where you're at in your business so that would be my tip is okay if you're just starting maybe say affiliate marketing something to consider or add in whilst i'm busy developing but the real expectation is that you're not going to be making money in the first six months because in the first six months you're building trust and value and in your way the way you measure your expectation is how many people are reading my blog? How many people are following me? So in a way, even though you're still practicing a affiliate marketing strategy, your expectation is not on, oh, I need, I, I need $10 sale. I haven't even got that $10 or $100 sale. You're not fixated on the, the money value. You're fixated on the traffic. So if that makes sense. So that's my example one. Uh, do you want to go with the next one, Stephen? Uh, yeah, can I just quickly add to that while um, we're on that topic? Basically, you can... We're not saying don't start affiliate marketing if you're a brand new business. What we're saying is be realistic. If you don't have an audience, if you don't have trust and you haven't built relationships, then you need to work on that first and foremost. Um, if you are in a position where you've started to establish yourself and you have started to build trust, then you can also use the affiliate marketing to help you reach a wider audience. Um, so that's just what I wanted to add to what Tasha was saying. The next one uh, that we're going to look at is to be clear on your values. So we've touched on this a lot, and we we are talking about being an affiliate marketer from a ethical perspective. What we're saying is, if you um, were to try and sell everything and anything, that could damage your reputation. It can damage your current business. Remember, you're trying to supplement your income through affiliate marketing. You're not trying to have it as a new business venture, um, and. 
if it doesn't align with your beliefs, if it doesn't align with your values, then you're not really going to trust in the process yourself. And what will happen is you'll quickly become disengaged from affiliate marketing and you will want to stop. Whereas if you are finding products and services for you to sell through an affiliate program that you do align with, that you do believe in, that you do trust and that you have tried and have seen the results, you're more likely to not only speak about it in a more positive way, but to increase your sales based on your personal experience with the product or service that you're selling. Um, just to give a quick example, as you know, I have my book, Oh No, Not Another Goal Setting Book. And I would not expect somebody to try and sell that book for me if they hadn't read it and tried out the exercises in it. Purely because I would want my readers to have transparent information. I would expect the affiliate marketers to be open and honest about what they got out of the book. And it could ruin my reputation if somebody misleads the sale. Um, so that's why I think it is a genuine expectation that you are clear on what your values are, where your values lie, and what you align yourself with. Uh, Tasha, have you got anything to add to that? Yes. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, so I love that with uh, being clear on your values because this also leads into kind of the next one in a little bit, but specifically, it also comes back to the ethical practice, right? If you are clear on what exactly you're going to start um, marketing, or um, then it becomes, you know, it can be hyper focused on it. So for me, like, choose because I'm in online monetization and also um, my target audience is entrepreneurs that are looking to stay in value, high return, all these things. Um, they, for me, it's about recommending products that are at a good cost effective, um, cost effective and also have um, the most value out of it. So it returns the most. So for me is I don't necessarily have one product I have at least four that I'm affiliated with. However, something that I'm also on that a lot of people don't know is I'm on ClickBank and on AWIN, which is basically affiliate marketing programs, which you can use. I've registered on there. I think one of them I've made $5 so far or five pound, but you need a certain amount of money. So the reason why haven't really invested in any of those is because you have to work on a strategy of um, you have to put in uh, ad placements. Sorry, just to get a bit technical, but the value in that in comparison and the reason why I want to say to you is that I haven't necessarily tested out the products or it's a brand that I know of that I've used before, but it, it hasn't been, I, in, from an ethical point of view and from a value-based point of view, it's hard for me to kind of manage that because I feel like I'd be scattered. I can't confidently sell within myself. So guess what? Even though I've signed up to those programs, I've put it on the shelf. It's something that maybe if a product that I like comes into it and I found a strategy for it, I will do it. So in a way, by me managing my values, I've known to rather limit those possibilities because it, it works. Like there's so many um, videos on ClickBank working and um, even working for everybody else. Great for them. But for me specifically, my business is an affiliate marketing. So I need to go, okay, how much time? And this is a great, um, another will lead on to this knowing your limits and time, it's how much time do I actually want to spend on selling? My main value is growing my business and getting the most optimal monetization strategies for my viewers. 
why would I want to spend 80% of my time with affiliate marketing? And then it just takes long and it's just, then it's, it doesn't really motivate me. It's irritating. I just become unmotivated. Ugh, it's just like a loss, you know, sorry, that was very slang there. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like a um, baggage to deal with. Sorry, that was just super <laughs> I'm so sorry. But whatever, I was feeling it in the moment. So that's me, authentically me. So the thing is, it's about knowing what your personal goals in. And this comes back to last week as well about the five habits of an entrepreneur. What do you want for your business? How much time do you have to spend? And that is a great way to manage your expectations. So knowing your limits, know what your business um, needs to thrive. How much time do you have for it? Do you want to add with any of those? I kind of brought up two points here, which I can't uh -huh. help. But <laughs> it's, well, three, focus is key, knowing your limits and time. So choose any one of those to fall back on. <laughs> Yeah, so I will add to the um, focus is key and knowing your limits at the same time. Uh, so basically, everything you said is right, and I completely 100% agree with you. It is all about understanding who you are, what your business is about, who you're trying to attract, you know, that re really focus in. The other thing that I want to point out is, you mentioned something that's key here, and it does link to time now, is how much time do you want to spend on your affiliate marketing? Because you've got another business to run or you've got a job that's, you know, full time. So it's important that you understand what method of selling works for you. Now, when we're talking about methods of selling, we're not talking about the fact that you've got to pick up the phone and ring and try and make sales calls. We're talking about something that is evergreen and will always be there and work for you. So it could be a blog, it could be through YouTube, it could be through loads of different strategies. Um, which one works for you and build your affiliate marketing around that rather than trying to grab at every different type of affiliate marketing strategy out there. Over time, you can do that. Uh, do that. You can start practicing and start experimenting but focus is key it's only one aspect of supplementing your income you've still got your own business that you need to focus on so make sure that you are not just applying time but applying the correct amount of time for you um there is something else that i want to add but i can't quite get the words right right now so anything else you want to add tasha yeah, that's absolutely fine. So actually, whilst I was, uh, Stephen was talking, I was just thinking about last week's video. And if you haven't watched it, please do go watch it because a lot of this, again, interlinks with each other. And it comes down to also know what your return on investment is. So coming back to, right, this is how much time I'm willing to spend on this. Is it serving me? Is it actually bringing me value? Um, and coming to time bound, this takes time. We said it multiple times is the expectation of the reality of affiliate marketing. Is it an investment? Okay. As your business grows, it will grow. Okay. Meaning there's a lot of prep work to do now. And the way you measure your expectations is coming back to, okay, what am I measuring it against? So example of is um, your clicks. So I know I get a lot of clicks on my affiliate marketing links, but none of them actually get a return, like a, a actual a conversion. That's the word I'm looking for, conversion, okay? Because number one, my um, the content that I'm producing can be a lot more focused on those affiliate marketing. So I should use more blog posts with links in it, um, obviously creating it more, um, making it more creative for the viewer, but the more traffic I get will mean more links, clicks, 
will mean the probability of that sale and conversion going through will be higher. So you need to decide in your time bound length, okay? Realistically, managing that expectation. How much time am I going to give myself to just drive traffic? How much time am I going to give myself to just focus on link clicks? And then how much time am I going to give myself to measure those conversions? And when you measure those conversions in a way, because only at the end of you've got all the traffic, you've got the, um, the, the clicks, then you look at the expectation of if you're looking to make $100 a month, if your affiliate marketing strategy that you've worked on and you're only getting like, say, uh, 50 cents a click, then you need to manage, are you in the right affiliate marketing percentage? So for me, I know exactly all my affiliates that I use is 30 to 20, well, 25 to 30% or it's $65, um, $65 a click, meaning conversion that is, uh, $30 with a conversion. So if I'm looking to make $100, that's realistic for me at the end of that time frame. But if that profit that I'm making is little, you're gonna need 10,000 plus that for that hundred dollars to come in. So again, with managing expectations, firstly, are you in the right affiliate marketing program? Have you chosen the right affiliate marketing program that serves your business? Okay. Then are you giving yourself time? Do you have any um, stats to give on the average user, Stephen? I, I do. Um, so it links quite nicely actually. So. It can take between three to five years for any small business to see a profit. That's any small business. Uh, with affiliate marketing, it can take as long as 12 months before you start seeing a profit. It could be a lot shorter. Again, it depends on the types of relationships that you've cultivated, depends on the type of audience that you have and the trust that you have and what you're selling. Now, in 12 months, you could actually see a real income coming in from affiliate marketing and if it's evergreen that content is always there so you don't need to keep constantly updating and refreshing and making sales it just sits there and people will visit like tasha was saying earlier when it comes to traffic to your website over time if you continue to refresh it if you continue to use seo strategies people will naturally be drawn to your website because it will appear in front of them um Affiliate marketing as well, as Tasha has said, if you're not with the right program, you could be earning pennies per click or pennies per conversion, which means that you have to have tens of thousands of people coming to your website in order to start making any real profit. Alter um, alternatively, I don't think I said that right, but alternatively, um, <laughs> you could go with an affiliate marketing program where you are making 25 to 30% per sale on a high ticket item. But in order to sell those high ticket items, you would need to have a strong relationship and trustworthy um, and trust within your audience in order to make those sales. It would mean you have to sell less of the high ticket items in order to make more money. But either way, using affiliate marketing practices and the advice given and actually coming to the course that we've launched that we're launching would be a fantastic way for you to grow your own business as well as supplement your income through affiliate marketing exactly i love that i love the fact that you just said that um i love also the fact that you've given really two examples clear examples is your traffic your you know, you can have a like Amazon associate, you can be an Amazon affiliate, but the way you're gonna make money off it is if you have over 10,000 subscribers on YouTube because you've got the constant flow of traffic coming in. So your probability is higher. Or if you have that trusting build relationships in the higher end 
uh, percentage is where you can also gain. So it's really where, where are you? It's all about analyzing where you are and everything. So to wrap up and with that beautiful mic drop moment from Stephen is come to our workshop, uh, conference, whatever you want to call it. It's how to supplement your business with affiliate marketing. And those strategies are really, I definitely feel that in the course, as Stephen said, it's not just about affiliate marketing. It's really good tips that you can implement on your own business for yourself. So if you want to find out more, you look in the link in the description below and we will see you again next week. This has been absolutely fabulous, Stephen. I really enjoyed it. I even took some notes for myself to take away, to reflect back on my expectations with myself and my business, which is great. You know, always learning. It is great. It's fantastic. And it's also useful for the reminder and to make sure that you're measuring correctly. Exactly. Okay. And until next time, everyone, please do like this video, please subscribe and also check out my blog, which is miskiff.blog for more resources. I'll link in the description below. Also check out Explore Protex blog, which is protecaccounting.com. And there is loads of blog posts on there as well about affiliate marketing, great content on business as well. So do check out all the resources in the description below. Until next Monday and every week, this is just going to get better and better. So remember, if you haven't watched anything, play the series from the start again, get to know affiliate marketing, get to hype yourself up. I will link this playlist as well at the end of this video. Uh, so yeah, hope you have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye.